I'm Laurel Ulrich, and I'm delighted to welcome you to Tangible Things. In order to recover aspects of the past, historians rely on things that were left behind, letters and diaries and court records. But this course is going to focus on material objects, artworks, ethnographic artifacts, scientific specimens, tools, everyday things. How did I come up with this strange way of working through history and recovering history through objects? It happened as I was trying to write about the history of early American women. Although I could go quite a ways by using written documents that had been left behind, very few of those documents had actually been created by the women themselves. Gradually, I turned toward material objects, what historians like to call material culture. One thing led to another thing until I was totally absorbed with writing history through tangible things. This course builds on an exhibit and a general education course that I helped to create at Harvard in 2011. Now, I have some collaborators who've helped me in this project. Ivan Gaskell, my longtime co-teacher, was for many years a curator in the art museums at Harvard University. He is now a professor at the Bard Graduate Center in New York City. Sarah Carter is a graduate of Harvard College and also has a PhD in American Studies from Harvard. She has taught here in the History and Literature program and is now a curator at the Chipstone Foundation in Milwaukee. Sarah Schechner is a historian of science who is curator of the collection of historical scientific instruments at Harvard. And Sarah and I have organized this online course, and Ivan and Sarah Schechner have graciously also participated. We want you to feel some of the excitement that we feel about the fabulous things that have been collected at Harvard over the centuries. But the bigger and broader goal was to demonstrate that close attention to material objects can be an entry point into history. Maybe we should take a look at what I happen to have in this bag that I carry with me every day. You gotta have something to eat. Nail clipper, smartphone, lip balm, my mother's folding scissors, a little magnifying glass. So what we have in front of us here is kind of an accidental accumulation of things. So many of Harvard's collections actually originated as accumulations associated with one person. But more of Harvard's collections are organized around some essential quality. Why don't we start with something really easy, like color, to illustrate a concept that you have to come up with a, a general category and then sort the objects within it. Each of these objects could be associated with one of the human senses. Sight, taste, sound, smell, touch. Now this object, it's in my bag for sentimental reasons. Something that belonged to my mother. This is a curiosity, but it's also a really interesting example of the way that artifacts recall people and give us a sense of, of memory. 
There are, in fact, hundreds of ways to go from a single object like this little pair of scissors into Harvard's museum collections. We could find representations of scissors in the art museums. We could find a photograph of Julia Child using her kitchen scissors. We could even find a photograph of a woman who was president of something called the Boston Fragment Society. In the same way, I could take this lip balm. As I look at it, I can see almost every form of history. We see how a product made by bees became appropriated and turned to commercial use. We see here this barcode which leads us to the history of technology and beyond that to computer science. We see a range of logos that invite us to think about the evolution of the so-called natural products. These products, which both claim to be natural, are totally invested in these larger political, economic, and social movements, not just by their barcodes, but by the whole edifice of historical transformation of business and commerce, and of course, the regulatory processes of government that came along with them. History's all around us. It's everywhere. When I pick up an apple, it isn't just an apple, if I pay attention.